Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am building something from the new Super Mario Brothers movie. It recently released, I haven't had a chance to watch it just yet, it will probably happen within the next week or so, but I was looking through some of the trailers to the movie and I was trying to pick out something that I wanted to build. Now obviously there are lots of other people out there making stuff from this movie right now and I wanted to pick something that wasn't like already done or even necessarily like a main character. Uh, I, on one of the trailers that I watched, there was this cute little blue star swinging from the cage kind of with a nihilistic approach to captivity. Uh, I believe the character's name is called Lumily, and that is what I'm going to build today. A uh, nice life-size blue star that has a warped sense of humor. Let's get to building. So the pattern for this shape was a tad bit difficult, but I think I pulled off an asymmetrical rounded star fairly well. I actually built a foil and duct tape version of this character over the top of an oversized Easter egg. Then I pulled the pattern off from it. I started by tracing the numerous parts onto some six millimeter EVA foam. By staggering the pattern back and forth, I'm able to fit more into a smaller space. The one, two, three blocks aren't 100% necessary but they do make it easier when tracing to weigh down my pattern. You could also use thumbtacks or tape if you wanted to have extra little help. With all the pieces traced, it's now time to cut the parts out. The cover page for my templates explains all the markings, but while I have you here, I might as well explain what they are. The U-shapes on the edges are registration lines to help line up parts. The blue highlighted areas indicate 45 degree angle cuts inward from the line. An asterisk followed by a L means it is the left side. To get the right, turn the pattern label side down and trace again. When cutting parts, with angles, I like to have my pattern close by to use as a reference. The main body of Lumily is made up of six pieces. They are not even in shape, though they do look very similar. It's mostly noticeable at the tips. They are labeled A through F and aligned in order from left to right. Like I normally do with complex or large areas, I glue up half at a time with contact cement. I close up the big V-shaped darts at the bottom of each piece and go about tacking them together. Make sure to use the registration marks as a guide, pick a side, and work your way across the scene. Any imperfections can be sanded back later. The main body will look like a teardrop when done.
Luma Lee has this tuft at the top of his head, which I guess technically makes him a six pointed star instead of a five. Instead of trying to figure out crazy joints where these parts should meet together, I figured it would be easier to overlay them on a central body. So once an appendage is assembled, I can position it, trace it, and then glue it wherever I want it to be. I heat form it first to limit the stress on the joint, adding contact cement and speeding it up with the drying process by hitting it with the heat gun, then tack it together. Once assembled, I position it where I want it, contact cement both parts and attach it. I probably should have positioned it a little higher up on my tuft, but oh well. His legs are little chubby stubs that are made of two pieces each, just like the tuft. I heat it up to form it into shape a little, contact cement the edges, and then tack them together in place. Once assembled, you may want to increase the angle on the inside of the leg by sanding it back with a rotary tool to get a better fit wherever you position it. Just like the other two appendages I've already added, this gets the same steps. I had to cut the pattern into four parts on the arm because there's some drastic curves involved. In order to space my things a little better, I did one side before doing the other, so I glued one arm and one leg, then repeated the process on the other side.
while my transitions are decent with the parts I wanted them to be a little bit smoother, or at least attempt to make them smoother. So I busted out some clay foam. This is FOMO from Cosplay Apprentice. I wet it a little to make it more pliable, and I also wet my surface that I'm attaching it to to make it connect. With my fingers and some more water, I work it into the cracks, smoothing over the material. After a day or so, I can sand it back and move on to the next step. I rushed myself and didn't sand as much as I should have, but you can take your time if you plan on building this. Trying to put out one video a week kind of shortens the amount of time I have in order to get these videos out, so sacrifices must be made. He's got a little bit of cellulite, we'll say. I drill a hole for a potential stand later and cover with two layers of Plasti Dip. For a base, I hit him with a light blue spray paint. Arms and legs get a darker blue and then his tuft gets a light green. While the color is not bad, I wanted it to be a little lighter blue, and of course I ran out of the color spray paint I needed in the middle of spraying this, so I'm gonna try and make up for this with an acrylic wash over the top of everything. Just water down the paint and slather it all over. I could have definitely recessed his eyes and mouth to add a little bit more dimension, but I just wanted to paint the flat surface and kind of be done with it. So I drew a quick set of eyes and positioned his mouth, then, then I hand painted on the details. Once the eyes were dry, I went back with a white paint and added the little light glares that you see in the finished product. With this last bit of paint, my adorable nihilist star is done. If you really like this build and would like for me to make a custom stand, or or maybe even the cage that you see in the scene where he's with Luigi, let me know in the comments below. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I think it turned out pretty awesome. Definitely a cute little star to brighten up my day or let me know of the uh, impending doom that is my life. Now, um, I, I thought it turned out pretty good. I did rush it a little bit, so some of the clay foam, you can kind of see where it doesn't blend as well. If I would have took my time and sanded, it wouldn't have been as obvious, um, but such as the price of making YouTube videos once a week. Um, maybe you'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something out of the Super Mario movie, make it life-size and adorable and sit on your shelf and people look at it and just go, aww. 
Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Ooh, fresh meat for the grinder. And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. Um, we're just gonna like go uh, chillax. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.